I think that the uh, topic of inclusive value chain development is part of the evolution of how global value chain research has been moving. And just as a backdrop to defining it, which I will do in a second, in the last three to five years, uh, many international organizations have adopted global value chains approaches because they're looking for ways to link globalization and development. And I think USAID's work on value chain development was a, a front runner of how to bring in a lot of these questions for countries and the different uh, clienteles that you're serving. One first step in thinking about inclusion is entry into a global value chain. And for many countries, entry they think of in terms of export production, whether it's Mexico's maquila industry beginning in the mid-1960s, or Costa Rica and other countries more recently trying to promote export processing zones as a way to get into high-tech uh, manufacturing. I think the idea of exports being an entry point is important. But from a development point of view, in terms of this notion of inclusiveness, that's not enough. What countries are now saying is, even if we get into these export industries, uh, they want to have local firms be involved in those industries. So part of what we do with value chain analysis is we look at the global value chain and then we say, how are the particular countries we're looking at plugged into those value chains? Which areas are they actively involved in? So I think a second level of inclusiveness is the participation of local firms in those chains. I think a third level is the whole backward and forward linkage question uh, inside countries. Countries are, are interested in moving up and down the value chain in terms of capturing more of the activities from R&D and design on the one side to actually being able to brand their own products. Uh, and in terms of small medium enterprises and smallholder farmers, which is a big concern to many developing agencies, I think the way people are framing the question from the global value chain point of view is how can small medium enterprises or small holders participate in the internationalization of global value chains. And typically they're doing so by linking to the other companies in the chain, whether they're multinationals or big domestic firms. I, one of the striking features of these global value chains in recent years is that lead firms have been talking more and more about streamlining or rationalizing their supply chain. And what that means from their point of view is they want to work in a smaller number of countries that are strategically located around the world. And in those countries, they want to work with suppliers that have more capabilities, where they can do what they call sometimes one-stop shopping. A huge part of what a small firm needs to be aware of from a multinational point of view is two things. One, quality of your workforce, continuing to invest in workforce development, better skills. For your, all these multinationals want people who are highly versed in IT technologies, for example. You have to be able to communicate with these firms on a long-term uh, or distance basis. And I think multinationals are also uh, looking for companies that focus on quality and can uh, meet international standards. So the one issue that comes up again and again is depending on the particular industry you're involved in, whatever the key standards or certifications are that are required for the end product, the small firms need to have those, those kinds of certifications. So I think that the donors have a big role in, in partly defining this, this idea of inclusive development as, as being bottom up and focusing on smaller companies, but they don't want to do so in a way that's uh, going back to, let's say, the old cluster approaches where small firms feel like they're isolated from bigger market trends. I think what's coming through again and again with these global value chain approaches is every set of companies is part of this bigger chain or this bigger system, this bigger market system. And by just doing the mapping of how the chain is organized, we're providing really useful knowledge for leverage points, intervention points, uh, where development multipliers can actually be created.